Yeah, so why, why do we need DB? Mm, in EMC, at least if you do measurements, and sometimes also if you do simulations, lots of measurement results will be expressed in DB. So this is the measurement result of some spectrum analyzer. Um, you, you can't see the company logo here somewhere, but it's from Ola and Schwarz. And so you, you see lots of DBs here, for example. There's a reference level given in DBM, whatever this means. There's some attenuation given in DB. There are some markers here on the curve that are once again given in DBM and so on. Um, and so if you would check other um, devices, I can maybe also try to zoom in here a bit. So this is a signal generator, and on the signal generator you also see that there's a DB button, for example, that some level here is given in DB. And if we would check the other instrument here, this is also some, some older spectrum analyzer. Uh, yeah, there is, if I zoom in more, yeah, so there's also some attenuation given there in DB, um, and you see, um, there's some maximum input given here, so yeah, power plus 30 dBm, minus 10 dBm here, plus 30 dBm here, um, there's another dBm button here. So if you do measurements, you will very, very often stumble upon this dB thing. So what is this? And there, there are two things in DB, and the first thing that we deal that we will deal with is is called a figure, and a figure means you have something like um, an amplifier, for example, or a filter, um, some system that has an input and an output, and now you measure the power at the input and the power at the output, so you have two powers. And you take the ratio of the two powers, then you calculate the logarithm out of these two out of this ratio and the logarithm to the base of 10, the cardiac logarithm. Um, and then you then you would get bell. And bell is not very handy, so you multiply by 10 and then you get decibel. That's the idea. Yeah, so um, as explained, and what is common is to use the cardiac logarithm. Sometimes people also use the natural logarithm, then the result would not be decibel, but nepper. Um, and because you take, for example, power and power, you divide power by power, you get a dimensionless, a unitless quantity. If you, and, and if you want to calculate the logarithm, you can only do this for a dimensionless uh, unitless quantity. You can only calculate logarithm out of a number, not logarithm out of a unit. And so the result will be also unitless. And then you multiply it by 10, it will still be unitless. And so then still we give it the unit dB. But the unit dB is not really a unit, it's, it's kind of a pseudo unit. Um, we will see later on that calculating in dB sometimes is strange. Um, but still, as every other unit, um, it should not be modified or extended by appending additional information. Mm, but this is still done, as we have seen on the slide before. Um, yeah, so there is this, this DBM, for example. Yeah, so it's, it's DB with some small letter M appended. That should show, okay, this is not the usual DB, this is some, some kind of special DB. And this is, huh, um, physicists, they, they, they get like a little pain when they see something like this because it's really, really bad style uh, to yeah, extend units with additional information. But for the DB, it's still often done and in engineering sciences, it's somewhat okay. I, I also don't like it too much, but, um, is the standard way to do it. So don't confuse this figure with such a figure. as a figure of Otto van Gericke. You should have all seen this in, uh, on our city market. Um, okay, so then as you might know, this unit name Bell is named after Alexander Graham Bell. I never found out why Alexander Graham Bell is written with two L and the unit Bell is only written with one L. I have no clue, but it's still named after him. 
And he was, as you can see, he was also an engineer and of course he was an inventor. He did not really invent the telephone, but he made it commercially successful. Um, when he died in 1922, also the, to honor him, the whole telephony system in the US was silenced for one minute. And um, he was also a speech therapist and, and he found out how our hearing system works and that our hearing system also um, works on a logarithmic scale, let's say. And it's, it's difficult to explain this for um, acoustic pressure, but um, there are more human senses that work on some acoustics, uh, that, that work on this logarithmic scale. Um, for example, our impression of a pressure on our skin. And it's always a bit difficult to explain, um, but let's imagine you have, you have a weight, of course my cell phone is heavier, but you have something that is 5 gram and you have something that is 6 gram. And of course the 5 gram and the 6 gram make some pressure sensation of our skin. And if I lift up 5 gram, and if I lift up 6 gram, I will surely know the difference between the two. So, but if I have two other weights, which is 50 gram, and once again, one gram more, 50 gram and 51 gram, I would probably not know the difference. But if it's 50 gram and 60 gram, I will know the difference. And so once again, if I have two other weights, which is 500 gram, and 501, no difference. 510, no difference. But 600, okay, I will note the difference. So our sensation of pressure on our skin also does not work on a linear scale. We cannot feel and measure absolute differences. We cannot feel one gram, but we, we can feel if it's heavier by a certain factor. For example, if it's if it's 10% more, then we can feel it. And so this means our, um, our human feeling of pressure on the skin also works on a logarithmic scale, not on a linear scale. And the same is, for example, also for light. Um, so in this, um, if, if, you have a, if you have a light bulb somewhere uh, with, I don't know, 10 watts, and you have a second light bulb with 20 watts, you will clearly see a difference, but if you would have, let's say, 100 and 110, you would not see a difference. But if you have 100 and 200, you would once again see a difference. Um, so also our feeling of our, our perception of light also works on a logarithmic scale. And the same is for acoustic pressure. So the, the question is why, and this is also the reason why, why we express values in decibel, why it's meaningful for our human perception of pressure, of acoustic pressure, of light intensity uh, to work on a logarithmic scale and not on a linear scale. So any minor change would induce an effect? Yeah. But a minor change, so for example, we cannot, um, as discussed before, so this minor change, if we have 5 gram and 6 gram, we can note the difference, but 500 and 501 gram, we cannot note the difference, even if it's a minor change. Um, so it's, it's maybe pointing a little bit in the right direction of the answer, but, but, but not really. Um, the thing is, on, this, on a logarithmic scale, you can measure very small quantities and you can also measure very high quantities and still they would fit in, in the scale. Or you can, even if you can measure very small, maybe, maybe this is what you mean, yeah, right? Even if we can measure, even if I can lift up, I'm, I'm not very strong, but even if I could lift up, let's say, 100 kilogram, um, I could still feel one gram. So 
I can measure something very, very large and still I can note small differences at, on, on, on a small scale. I cannot note small differences on a large scale. Uh, I would not care if it's 100 kilogram or 100.1 kilogram, but still I can measure one gram and two gram with my hand. And this is what the logarithmic scale means. We have a high dynamic range. Um, we, have a large, we have a large difference between um, the smallest values that we can perceive and the largest values that we can perceive. And this is meaningful for, for the discussed uh, perception of pressure on our skin. It's meaningful for light because um, we would still like to see in the evening if it's getting dark and we should not be totally blinded by direct sunlight during the day. Um, and also for acoustic pressure it makes sense. Like when I hear it to, to hear a small whisper and still if there's, a, um, if there's an airplane um, close by which is very very loud that our ears do not get destroyed. So the, the, only, the only thing um, where yeah, there's one human perception, one human uh, sense that does more work on a linear scale and not on a logarithmic scale. And which one is it and why? It's feeling of temperature. So if I would have a bucket of water with let's say zero degrees Celsius, if I put my finger in there, okay, it's really, really cold. Um, if I would have a second bucket of water with two degrees Celsius, two, two degree more or two Kelvin more, okay, it's still quite cold, but it's not super cold anymore. It's, it's a bit warmer. So I would be able to note the difference between zero degrees Celsius and two degrees Celsius. Okay, if I would have another bucket of water with 20 degrees Celsius and 22, once again, I would note the difference. And if I would, let's say, have 40 degrees Celsius and 40 de 42 degrees Celsius, so once again, a two Kelvin difference, put my finger in there and there, I would note the difference. Um, so for the temperature scale, we are able to measure more absolute differences. It's more, it's more linear scale, it's not a logarithmic scale. And why it's a linear scale and not a logarithmic one for this human perception? Because we don't need this high dynamic range. We don't need to be able to measure very, very small temperatures and very, very high temperatures because if it's colder than zero degrees Celsius, it will be freezing cold and it's possibly deadly environment. And if we go to temperatures higher than 45, 50 degrees Celsius, it's also very, very hot and uh, potentially dangerous for the human being. So the, um, the frequency range where humans are comfortable is very, very limited. And therefore we don't need to have this high dynamic range in the measurement. And that's why temperature feeling more works on a linear scale. 